Hi, I'm Art Bergeron, and if you haven't seen this show before, uh, this is Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. Uh, my day job is as an elder law attorney, but of course, that's not what I'm doing here. I'm talking about my friends, Frank and Mary. Their goal in life is very simple. They want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's on Nantucket, that means they never want to leave. They don't want to go to the mainland. They don't want to go to Martha's Vineyard. No, God forbid, they want to stay right here. And so the question is, who are the people you need to know? What are the things you know we need to know about uh, if that's exactly what you want to do? So, so I've got a, a terrific co-host, my friend Allison Forsgren, who has always been finding these great guests. And and I was actually, but I was actually introduced to Allison many years ago by our guest, this wonderful person. Whom do we have today, Allison? Well, um, this week or this time on our show, we have Fran Cartoonin. Um, who has been a friend of mine for a long while and um, sits with both Arthur and I on the board of Friends of Our Island Home. And more than that, she is an island historian. Um, it, since her retirement, she's written many books um, about <clears throat> Nantucket history, public history, um, things that have happened here um, in the past. And uh, she stays on top of what's current too. Fran, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. It's really nice to be on Frank and Mary. I've watched it so many times, and here I am today. And and, and Fran, as, as I had mentioned, actually, you're the person that introduced me to Allison, actually, one day at our island home. I remember that. I remember sitting with you with you, you and your husband and Allison quite, quite a while ago. And, and since then, I've learned about all the other things that you have done here. Um, so as, as Allison mentioned when we were starting, usually my first question is, so how did you get to Nantucket? But in your case, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty straightforward, right? You're, you're actually one of those rare, rare people. Well, yeah, I am really from here. And I'm not sure we're so really rare as you might think. My sister-in-law used to say so to Voce all the time. We're still here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. My Nantucket grandfather um, was a 10th generation descendant of the very first people who came here, which makes me a 12th generation descendant. Wow. But on the other hand, um, my grandmother was an immigrant from Finland, and that gives me some understanding of the immigrant experience firsthand. And, and, and one of the things that you've really kind of really focused on since you've been the whole time you've been here, really, but certainly in recent years has been focusing on history here. And I, I know um, before the show, we were just talking about the fact that Allison's last guest was Kimmel McCarthy. Am I pronouncing that? Is it Kimmel or Kimmel? Kimmel. Kimmel McCarthy, um, the, the, the new direct, director of diversity, uh, equity and inclusion here working for the town of Nantucket. And in the course of our conversation, I was I was saying, well, this, this must be really interesting. You know, do you work with much with the Azurian population? And he said, and he responded, oh, yes, you know, I've dealt with the, the Cape Verdean folks here. And I was like, I didn't even know there were any Cape Verdeans on, on Nantucket. I knew that there was a, an Azurian population. And I guess this is a kind of a lead into one of the things that you're you've been kind enough to come on and talk about today. Yeah, I'd really love to talk about it because um, I've, I've done a lot of writing about diversity, past and present, on Nantucket, including, you know, uh, the Cape Verdean experience. And that's going to be the subject of an exhibition at the Whaling Museum that's opening uh, Monday on July 5th. Uh, it'll be all day but there'll be staff and speakers on hand between three and five in the afternoon. It's free admission for Nantucket residents and for all guests of Cape Verdeans. Uh, and the reason that it's on the day after Man American Independence Day is because July 5th is Cape Verdean Independence Day. So there will be flag buttons for all visitors uh, celebrating the fact that Cape Verde gained independence from Portugal in 1975. So it is now the Republic of Cabo Verde, a democracy with an elected president and an appointed prime minister. Uh, the, 
It's a small country. The population is somewhat over five and a half million people spread out over ten islands. Um, but there are nearly twice as many Cape Verdean expats living all around the world, but most particularly in southern New England, including Nantucket. And their remittances back home make up about 20% of the gross national product of the nation. And Nantucket Cape Verdeans have for generations made contributions of goods and other means of support to Cape Verde. Um, they've been coming to Nantucket for a really long time. Um, Nantucket whale ships began picking up crew members from Cape Verde Islands before 1800. In fact, the very first Cape Verdean to be naturalized as a U.S. citizen was naturalized in Nantucket um, in the 1820s. Um, so they were men. They came on whale ships. It wasn't family. And certainly no women. But these men came to Nantucket and some of them stayed and they married locally and they had families. But then there was a big change around 1900 when Nantucket began to do really large scale commercial cranberry uh, cultivation. And then entire Cape Verdean families began coming to Nantucket to work the cranberry bogs. And uh, their descendants are with us today. We have descendants of Cape Verdean whalers and we have descendants of Cape Verdean cranberry workers. And that's what the exhibition at the uh, Whaling Museum is all about. Now, now, by the way, I didn't know that either. Well, you know, that's the thing, right, Allison? Every time you talk to Fran, you learn something, right? So I yeah, didn't know too. that. I didn't know that there was that there was a, 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 a you know a large or a, a real cranberry a growing period here where that was really focused on. I didn't realize that the Cape Verdeans were the people who who did cranberry bog management and stuff. That's an, that's an yeah. at one time. Uh, the Milestone Bog was the largest cranberry, largest single cranberry bog in the world. Wow. Whoa. Nowadays, they do cranberry cultivation uh, out in the Midwest, I think mainly in Wisconsin, and they have tremendous bogs. But uh, there was a time when we had the biggest one in the world. Um, and so and so, tell us a little bit about, um, about how the first um, Cape Verdeans arrived? Well, the first ones came on whale ships and they were guys. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when the 1910 census was taken, there were more than 100 Cape Verdean men, women, and children um, who, for the most part, had arrived within the year and they had come to work the cranberry bogs. And, and do you know if there's if there's much continuing uh, if any of these folks go back, you know, because in one of the interests, and by the way, I, I did happen to know about the fact that they were a separate country only because I was doing some work with some Azorian folks. Mm -hmm. um, because it, here in, in uh, where, where I live in Marlboro and in, in neighboring Hudson, there's a really large Azores population. And so we were, you know, I needed to get a corresponding lawyer because they had property in the Azores, which meant we need to figure out how Portuguese law worked, right? Mm -hmm. And they were, and I, and I, I came to realize, of course, there's this large Portuguese population here, but there are these also these people from the Cape Verdes, and they're also Portuguese speakers. So I said, oh well, this will be great. We can do this crossover, and we can also kind of learn about Portuguese law for the Cape Verdes. And then I was talking to a Portuguese lawyer, in, in you know, in because when we were trying to figure all this out, and he was, he kind of did, kind of did a huff, like. Didn't you know that the Cape Verdes are an independent country, right? I don't. Well, I didn't know how that happened, right? You know, we tend to see a lot of confusion between the Azores and the Cape Verde Islands. Uh, but if the Nantucket whaling captains had gotten them confused, they never would have gotten home again. <laughs> because to get to the Azores, if you left from Sconset and sailed due east, you would pass through the Azores before you got to mainland Portugal. But the Cape Verde Islands are off the coast of Africa, way, way to the southeast. Really different place. 
and uh, a different kind of population, different kind of landscape. And Azorians and Cape Verdeans get, do get in a bit of a huff when people confuse them. Well, so, and so, Fran, tell us about, um, I know you've been working on the exhibit at the NHA for, for some time. Um, um, how long will that be up? Well, the current exhibition is almost a, a teaser exhibition. It will be up the summer and the fall, but there are plans to open a more comprehensive one for 2022. So this year it's focusing on Cape Verdeans and Nantucket. And next year it will add, according to plans, the history and culture, and religion, art, of the Cape Verde Islands. So it will be a more comprehensive one. So come this year and plan to come next year. Um, there are, there's a connection with elder affairs and that is that two of the Nantucket Cape Verdeans that are featured in the show that's opening on Monday were recognized as senior of the year. So um, Jerace St. Jean was senior of the year in 2001 and Christine Santos was senior of the year in 2004. Uh, they were both nurses who, who made big contributions um, to Nantucket. Um, Miss St. Jean was Nantucket's first female emergency uh, medical technician. And after Christine Santos retired from delivering Nantucket babies, who knows how many, she, as a maternity nurse at Nantucket Cottage Hospital. After retirement, she became nurse case manager for the Nantucket AIDS Network. So both of these women were uh, recognized for their very significant contributions. And of course, there are a lot of others as well. You mentioned going to the islands. Um, Augie Ramos made two trips, 2003 and 2008 to uh, see what could be established in the way of supportive connections between New England Cape Verdeans and at that point a still rather young Republic, Republic of Cabo Verde. So we have, um, there, I think next year they'll, we'll have plenty of photos of those two trips. Um, I know that um, this, this past year was a big birthday year for me and although it was you know, and because it was COVID, I didn't plan the trip that I wanted to to the Cape Verde Islands. Um, I've got a good friend who is, um, whose whose father sailed the Ernestina, um, oh, the yeah. Ernestina, and so she was going to go with me. She's been back and forth a couple of times <clears throat> recently um, as well, and I that was going to be my big birthday surprise. Oh, I, oh, yeah. Oh, well, I hope you do it. Yeah, I'd love to. The, the Ernestina is um, under restoration again. In about a year, she will be sailing again. Wow, great. She's up in Maine right now. Uh, so the theme that uh, we're having for this year's show is called Shoulders on Which We Stand, which uh, Claire Andrew Watkins um, suggested. She made a film that premiered at the Whaling Museum quite some years ago called Some Kind of Funny Puerto Rican. And it was about <laughs> Cambridians, of course. But when her boyfriend was trying to explain to his mother about what Cape Verdeans were, after a while, she just threw up her hands and said, oh, you mean that girl, she's some kind of funny Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Claire made a movie with that title. Uh, but she suggested uh, the theme, Shoulders on Which We Stand. So there'll be one wall of photos of some of Nantucket's Cape Verdean elders of generations past and some of their descendants who have distinguished themselves in quite a few areas. And then there'll be a slideshow projected on another wall showing uh, the Cape Verde Islands from which the elders emigrated. And um, they're so different from Nantucket. Uh, they're, they're volcanic, they're arid, one of them is very much a desert and it's just beauty of a very different sort so you can't help but wonder when those first families came here to work the cranberry bogs what in the world did they think of new england winters <laughs> yes the first winter 
in oh. Nantucket. That wonderful, cold, rainy, the water kind of going sideways. Must have been a very, they, they were probably looking for the first boat back by that spring. They, they um, a lot of Cape Verdeans found places to live on Washington Street and on North Wharf. So can you imagine living on North Wharf? Wow. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, it wasn't me. <laughs> so the, this show is really a tip of the hat to immigrants on Nantucket um, from wherever, really, and mm -hmm. how they contribute to the success of their children and their grandchildren. So I, I guess that was, I was going to ask that question. Is this part of, you know, a, a real, do, does, the Nan, does, does the Nantucket Historical Museum, do, do they do, have they done many of these? regarding other immigrant groups that have come to Nantucket? Because well, you've, got, you've got all these ways, that's the interesting thing about Nantucket, right? It's such a small place, but they're, they're just people from like everywhere, it seems. You know? Well, they've done a whole series of, of nights. Uh, they, they, they've had a, Nep a Nepalese night, they've had a Bulgarian night, they've had a Jamaican night, uh, and they've all been very, successful and then in recent years when they've done readings of Moby Dick they've had people read passages from Moby Dick in their own languages that was really fun. Bulgarian night yeah like there are there are Nepalese and Bulgarian like communities in yes absolutely uh -huh. there's about a thousand people from Nepal here and I think the Bulgarians started when um Nerda uh, hired Bulgarian bus drivers quite a few years ago, and now there's a Bulgarian school, <laughs> weekend school. Nantucket is very, very cosmopolitan. Um, in fact, there was a, a woman who had one of the James Bradford Ames fellowships some years ago, um, and she um, studied the sense of ethnic identity, and particularly Cape Verdeans in New Bedford, where there is sort of ongoing, constant refreshing of uh, Cape Verdean immigrants, and Cape Ver Verdeans on Nantucket, who are third and fourth generation. Um, as I understand her findings, she found that in Nantucket, it isn't we're Cape Verdean or we're Azorian or whatever, it's we're from here versus you came here so Cape Verdeans tended to say to Jamaicans, we're from here, you came here. <laughs> right. and, so Fran, and so Fran, how many people would you estimate are from our Cape Verdean who currently live on Nantucket? Is there, is there a number? You know, I can't tell you. Um, we were discussing that um, when we had a food for thought talk at the, at the Whaling Museum in, in May where we had a couple of Cape Verdean elders uh, from the Cabral family, and the question came up, how many are there? And none of us could say. Mm -hmm. None of us could say. Uh, it's hard to know. Um, but what I'm sort of hoping is that uh, when we have the opening, we will see a lot of faces that we didn't know about. I really hope so. And, and I was aware of the fact that the Cape Verdean population in New Bedford kind of continues to grow. That yeah. there's, a, there's a big, it, it, one of the many, so you know Nantucket versus Martha's Vineyard, right? So this is New Bedford and Fall River, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing, legendary, long time, you know, and yeah. Fall River, there's a huge Azorian population. And then and, 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 and New Bedford is a really big Cape, Cape Verdean population. Right. Yeah, but there's also a very big Azorian. As person. well as Azorian. Yeah. That's right. But but I, but there are very few Cape Verdeans in Fall River. You know, in, in, in that in the Cape Verdean population keeps keeps growing. You know, in and it's like that's an amazing thing. That's an amazing thing. Cape Verdeans in Providence, for instance. Yeah, Southern New England uh, has been the home to a lot of Cape Verdeans. A lot of Cape Verdeans are in Wareham. And they just this past week opened a Cape Verdean museum in Falmouth. Wow. Yeah. I wonder why Southern New England is the, is, is the place. I mean, is it for family or 
it's, a, it's, it's interesting. It started um, with men coming on ships to ports. Yeah, maybe it's the water, right? <laughs> but then, you know, really, cranberry cultivation on the Cape and Islands uh, brought in a lot of Cape Verdean labor. And uh, once you're here, it is sort of hard to go back. <laughs> when, I, when I hear about weeks and weeks at sea to get here, and mothers saying we will never set foot on another vessel ever. Ever again. <laughs> ever again. Well, it's funny, you know, I, I might find when, when I try to describe to folks, that, you know, back here in America about the you know, the Nantucket population, and inevitably, you've got folks who, got, you know, they got there for the beach and they stayed for the community and nobody seems to leave. But and it seems like that's, you know, the common the common denominator is that we came from a bunch of other places and we're not going back there like ever, you know, like we, like we really like it here. And it just there's just a lot of people that have just gotten to really like Nantucket. Oh, they, they, they want to live in their houses until they die and be buried in the backyard. And be buried in the backyard. That's right. Yes. Yes. That's exactly right. And so, so um, and so, tell us a little bit more about what's going to be at the Whaling Museum. I mean, photographs and. Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm going to be a little bit surprised myself because I know what the two walls are that I've been working on but I actually don't know what else will be in that gallery um, on Monday. Oh, wow. So I'll be surprised. For the bigger, more comprehensive show, you know, we have a lot of plans. What, one thing um, that's going to be there, there's a Cape Verdean Nantucket, uh, Leslie Gomes Preston, who's a, an artist who's opening a gallery over on the Cape, actually, at the same time that we're opening the show. And she does paper sculptures of African women. And um, the, the NHA has purchased some of her paper sculptures to offer through the museum's shop. Oh. So they're, they're really quite spectacular, and I think you'll enjoy seeing them. They'll Sounds be, right up my alley. <laughs> they'll, they'll be three um, Cape Verdean flag buttons for everybody. Cape Verde, when they became independent, they had one flag, which was featured on t-shirts for Cape Verdean festivals. But then um, things changed and they switched to a different flag. So the buttons are the current flag, which is mainly blue. And it looks a whole lot like a European Union symbol. It's got the stars for the 10 islands and a blue background, it's very pretty. Um, and as I said, between three and five, there will be staff on hand. And Theron Singleton, who's one of the founders of Nantucket Equity Advocates, will be there to speak. And um, I'll be there to greet everybody. And uh, if people haven't been up to the roof of the Whaling Museum for the crew, I'll be happy to lead people up in the elevator to see what a wonderful view it is from the top of the Whaling Museum. Which is a spectacular space. I remember just happening up there once, kind of by mistake when I was in the museum. And you get there, you just can't believe it, right? You say, well, this is just like one of those dream spaces, right? That's a great, that's a great time. Well, Fran, good luck with this. This sounds like a wonderful, and, and by the way, I, I can't remember if you mentioned at the beginning, do you, do folks get to one of your great slideshows out of this too? Do they also? Well, there's going to be a great slideshow because in the museum, because in addition to views of the different islands, um, there will be pictures of many Nantucket Cape Verdeans from the permanent photo collection of the NHA. So uh, I hope that people will say, oh, I know her, or there's my grandmother, or, you know, oh my goodness, I, I didn't even know that person was CV. <laughs> and uh, so right. there will be a slideshow there at the museum. The uh, Novissimos, Mary and Al are making it, and I've seen most of it, and it's really spectacular. It's much more professional than what I've been able to do for our island home. <laughs> that's a high bar, Fran. You say that's a high, that's a very high bar, right? Well, right. come and see. You do yes. you you do great stuff. 
Well, Allison, you know, this was this was a great idea. You know, it was great having Fran come on because I think this is really, an, you know, Fran, this is the kind of, con you've made these kinds of contributions to Nantucket for so long, right? And it's just great that you're that you're that you're continuing to do it. That you're not, you're not, you know. I mean, there were I mean, there were a few people your age who are actually retired. You know, that actually, is, <laughs> but that that doesn't seem to be where you're going. So, no. Well, you know, I had an academic career, and then while that was going on, I was really planning my book, The Other Islanders. Uh, but I couldn't I couldn't write that until I was actually on Nantucket because I needed to be able to access documents that were not um, available even on microfilm at that point. So I retired a little early and I came home and I wrote the book and I thought that might be it, but it was only just the beginning. It just keeps going. Keeps going and going. Well, Fran, thank you so much for reaching out to me. It's always great to have um, ideas that come from the greater population for these shows um, and a lot of people do watch them and I think we'll um, we'll get some value from your suggestions to go to the exhibit. Absolutely. I'm certainly going to go. So, so good luck at the exhibit, Fran. And Allison, thank you so much for doing this, folks. So you have to go. You have to go. This is an important part of of kind of everybody's history on Nantucket is the, is the, the, uh, the Cape Verdean population. Um, thank you so much to Fran. Thank you, Allison, for continuing to find these great guests. Thank you, Fran, for actually finding Allison for me, which was a wonderful contribution to my life. And folks, we hope you'll, you've enjoyed the show. We hope you'll enjoy the, the, the program uh, at the Whaley Museum. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. Thank you very much. <laughs>